Hello and welcome to this workshop on Keyshot's geometry nodes. In this workshop I will go through how you can use the fuzz and displacement geometry node to add a bit more realism to your models. I'm going to be demonstrating on this bare model uh, and taking you from this model here on the right uh, which is using materials from the library and a bump texture to try and add some realism uh, to what I'd describe as the more realistic teddy bear uh, on the left hand side which is utilising those fuzz and displacement nodes. Um, I'll also kind of show you how you can add like this uh, wear and tear effect as well if you wanted to include that in any of your products. Okay so let's get started. Uh, I'm just going to uh, turn off this particular model set uh, and load this new one. Uh, so here all I've done is just kind of like duplicate the teddy bear uh, and I'll be working on this one that is on the left hand side so you can have that direct comparison with the one behind. So to start off with I'm going to play around with the fuzz geometry node. So I'm just going to kind of double click on the main body of the teddy bear to open up its material properties and you'll find all of the geometry nodes are within that material graph. So clicking on the material graph button it will open it up and I, here I can see how the bear's material is currently constructed. So I said this is using kind of one of the material types that you will find in the library itself uh, and it's also got a noise bump texture to try and give it some kind of depth and height over the surface. Now for this one uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these geometry nodes and just delete them uh, to go back to that initial plastic. Using the right mouse button and under geometry, I will then find that fuzz geometry node, which I can select to then bring into the material graph space. Uh, here, I'm then going to connect it up to the geometry of that teddy bear. Uh, before I execute uh, this geometry node to see all the effect it's had, I'm just going to double click on that node and make some numerical changes. It is always best to make changes before you execute, uh, just in case like the length uh, of this fuzz material is going to be too long for the, um, for the model itself or too short so it's either kind of extreme or you can't see anything. So for the purpose of this uh, demonstration uh, I'm just going to manipulate the length so it's a little bit longer at 15 mils uh, and I'm going to make sure it is on a ribbon shape front. Okay just so you can see what that's done I'm now going to execute those geometry nodes and we should see it updating teddy bear on the screen. So here we can see that it has got a kind of a grey fuzz material that is now coming out, but it's all still quite uniform. So this is where you can play around with the length variation and the randomness. And if I kind of change these values, it will then change how the fuzz material is on that teddy bear. So with the length variation, there'll be a variation of two between the 15 millimetres, so either way. So if we got them as different heights and the randomness changed the direction in which that fuzz is going in. If you wanted, you can also change the radius. That's like the main thickness of each of those fuzz materials and either increase or kind of decrease the density of how much fuzz is then going over that model. Okay, so just made it a little bit more dense to give that teddy bear kind of a bit more of a fluffy look. Now at the moment, as you can see, the uh, fuzz material is kind of this grey colour. You can change the colour under the appearance drop down here. Or another way you can affect what the colouring of that fuzz material is, is by adding another material in. So here, for example, if I just add a plastic to that surface, I can double click then on this plastic node and I can change the colouring to uh, like a, an orange colour. Hit OK. I will have to execute that geometry node again because we have changed settings for that geometry node. And once it is updated, we should then see that the fuzz coloring has also changed. Now, as mentioned, I was going to show you how to create some wear and tear on here. Uh, so for this one, I'm just going to use one of the textures that you can find in the flyout menu, and I'm going to use the camouflage option. With the camouflage node, I'm going to connect this to the density of the fuzz. For this one, it's good when you've kind of double clicked to select it to hit the letter C on your keyboard, as this will kind of just show the colouring positioning of this node and kind of grey out the other areas. This means you'll be able to kind of see where these are positioned on the model. 
Uh, so any manipulation you've done, it's a bit clearer to see. Now for this one, I'm just going to kind of increase the scale. So those patches are a little bit bigger, kind of over the model itself. And then the way the density works, it focuses mainly on kind of like black and white coloring. So I'm going to change these color options uh, to kind of like black and white. Um, so using the uh, color space drop down, I'm just going to change that to the CMYK and uh, manipulate what the black value is. Other things I'm also going to change here is just the kind of the color ba balance option. Uh, so this was kind of redistribute um, some of the colorings within there and make some stronger than the other. Uh, and I also want to mix those colors together. OK, so they blend on top of each other. And just to add uh, kind of like a bit of a feathering effect around it, I'm just going to increase the spray option just so it kind of does then graduate into those different colored sections. Selecting that node again, if I click on the letter C, it will disable kind of that color preview. I can then hit the geometry nodes button again to see what effect that has then had. So you'll then find kind of in the dark colored areas of that camouflage, the uh, density isn't as strong compared to where the white sections were. And so that can then give you the look of some wear and tear. Okay, so closing that a material graph down. I can then see that's now applied that fuzz material uh, to the teddy bear itself. Similar in colour looking, if you wanted to match the colour more, just play around with that colour of the plastic that is on the surface of the fuzz material. Uh, and then you can also, as I said, play around with like the colourings of that camouflage texture if you want to manipulate that wear and tear look even more. Uh, so next thing I'm going to focus on is kind of like the the nose of this teddy bear. It's quite smooth still at the moment. So I'm just going to zoom on in so we can see it a bit clearer and double click to bring up those material edits within here. Similar to the fuzz option, the displacement geometry node will be found in that material graph. So just going to reposition that teddy bear so we can see the nose a bit clearer. So as we can see in this material graph, uh, the kind of nose part is being driven by a weave. Uh, which you'll find in the library under the real cloth options uh, and the warp coloring is currently being controlled by like a color gradient going from orange to brown just to kind of give it a bit more of a, an effect within there make that weave stand out a little bit more now at the moment it's quite smooth and flat within there uh, if i even use this weave to control the bump height and just to kind of like um, manipulate that bump height within here like if i wanted to increase it to really see it you might see like a slight change in shadows um, but it still looks quite smooth and that's just because of the sizing of the texture as well now to kind of follow along with like the, the fuzz and to give it that bit more depth and slight more realism this is when you would use the displacement node the main difference between uh, your bump and your displacement is the bump gives the impression of height by manipulating how the light refracts off each of the individual pixels, whereas the displacement node will actually change the geometry of your surface. So it is actually physically giving it height. So similar with the fuzz node, uh, if you right click in the material graph window and under the geometry flyout, click on displace. I can then attach that to the geometry section of that nose model. Double click on the displace node will then show its details. It is always best to kind of double click and check all this before you execute anything, uh, just based on what the displacement height default value may have jumped to. In this case, it's 100 millimeters. That is way too big for the purpose of this particular model. Uh, so I'm just going to reduce that down to three. Now, if I click the execute geometry node button, I won't see any change at all to the model because I've not told it what texture it is using to displace by. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to uh, select this weave material, right click and duplicate it because so I want to use exactly the same settings as was in there here and attach this to the displace option. 
Now, before I, again, before I execute, I'm just going to make some color changes within here um, because the displacement value focuses mainly on kind of like uh, black to white, you know, and the grayscale options. That's how it calculates its values. Uh, so just to make it easier to control, I'm going to change what the warp and the weft color is. And so for the purpose of this one, I'm just going to kind of uh, change the uh, weft color to white and the uh, warp color to like a, a mid gray. Uh, with those, first of all, in place, I can then click that geometry nodes button to see kind of what effect that has then had on my model. Okay, so hopefully you did see there that uh, the kind of model itself did look to kind of expand in size, uh, and that is because it's taking to effect what these colors schemes are and has applied physical height to those different areas. Again, keeping in with the fact that we've got some worn out areas in the fuzz, I'm going to kind of do the same for the displacement option. So again, using that camouflage texture, I'm just going to connect this to the warp color option because it's only going to affect kind of one direction of this weave material. Okay, so kind of manipulating kind of like the scale and the sizing of it. Uh, similarly as before, you can hit the letter C to see where things are. And where the color schemes are going to be uh, and similar as before i'm just going to make sure everything is using that gray scale i'm also going to add in a little bit of spray so they start to blend in and mix together uh, and then also mix colors as well. So if they're on top of each other, again, they've kind of bl blended together. Clicking the little C will then disable that color preview and I can then execute that geometry node to add in that, that kind of worn out look on there. Uh, so you can see a slight now discoloration and that is due to the, the heights of that displacement now being different. So therefore the shadowing is going to be of different sizing. And there we have it. Uh, that is how you can use the fuzz and the displacement node um, in Keyshot to add further realism to your models. Thank you very much for listening.